and gentlemen, welcome to Fashion Avenue News, where only the best will do. I'm your host, Sophia Davis, and we have an absolutely fabulous guest for you today. Before we begin our interview, we're going to run over and say hello to our sponsors. We'll be right back in just a moment. We are back on Fashion Avenue, and we have a sensational, award-winning fashion couturier with us today, Mr. Kenya Goat Smith. Goat means greatest of all time. Kenya, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, uh, how are you, Sophia? Good afternoon. Glad to be a part of the show today. I'm so happy to have you finally on my show. <laughs> I'm excited. So we're going to jump right into the interview because I'm sure everybody wants to know how <laughs> she does it. So can you let's talk first about how you got interested in fashion design from the beginning. Are you self-taught or did you attend school? Well, um, I didn't attend school for fashion. Um, I, I, I went to architecture school at Howard University, actually. And um, I got into fashion, um, probably where most people, most entrepreneurs get into something, they, they see something or they experience something that they, they can't have um, in their regular lives. So they go out of the way to try to make something to fit um, more in their lives. And for me, um, I, uh, I, I started riding motorcycles many years ago, uh, as a hobby. And, uh, what I found, uh, being, you know, being a motorcycle rider and, uh, uh during the experience, it was that, um, the apparel that was available to people who rode motorcycles was very limited. Um, it could be very protective but not particularly stylish. Uh, or you can have something that's very stylish, but it gave up a lot on the on the protective uh, aspects of the of the garment. And you know, I was um, I was a, a new rider. I had a very powerful motorcycle at the time, so I, I wanted something that you know would look cool when I actually got to where I was going. And but still, and if I was on the road would protect me in a fall. So um, after dealing with it for a, a few years, I I went out of my way to make my first garment for myself, which was a, uh, a vest. I was in a motorcycle club and we all wore vests. So I made this vest that actually had protective um, uh, 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 
uh, materials in the back of it to protect my spine if uh, if I was in a motorcycle ball. And, you know, a lot of people saw it and they thought it was cool and they asked for one. And, and from there, I just kind of started getting ideas about what other uh, things could be done. And I started really looking at, you know, uh, uh, other mo companies, motorcycle uh, jackets and you know, different ideas from uh, uh, different styles. And I, I figured out a way to really uh, marry the two together. And that's kind of where it all started. And then I uh, started making more and more designs and and getting a little bit more adventurous. And, and, uh, and I, uh, in around 2013 or 14 or so, I had somehow formed a whole collection. And um, uh, my very first fashion show was with uh, 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 a guy named Pim, uh, who did this uh, kind of off the fashion thing in uh, the village, um, uh, uh, down NYC or something like that, it was called. Um, and <laughs> He asked me if I would, he liked the whole motorcycle thing and asked me if I would do a fashion show for him. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try it out. And I did it. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was, uh, it was cool. It was at the Fat Black, Fat Black Pussycat uh, down on, uh, uh, I believe that's uh, right over there on Sixth Avenue, over there by the, uh, the famous basketball courts over there, the uh, the independent basketball courts, and yeah, it was a uh, it was a good experience, and I, I learned a lot, and and then I kind of started getting more and more into fashion, and people liked the stuff, and kind of drew me in, and yeah, it was, it was cool. Sounds good. That sounds <laughs> great. So now, now that you are a fashion designer, how do you start a collection? Do you start with maybe? Um, you know, the fabric, do you start with the, do you draw it, do you draw it, do you just think of it, you know, how do you actually start a collection, how do you design that, and what is the inspiration? Well, um, what I have done, I mean, my first collection wasn't that way, it was very more kind of hodgepodge, and it was a lot of individual pieces that I put together, but that's that's not truly what a collection is. A collection is when you have a, a common theme in all the garments in, in, the, in the collection, um, whether it's a common material or a common color or a styling or a applique or whatever it is. Uh, you need something to kind of really bind all the garments together to kind of make a statement or a theme. And um, so I think the first time I did that was um, around 2015. And I actually, that's when I did my very first big, I call it my big show uh, for a small boutique fashion week over at the Metropolitan Pavilion. And uh, I had really had designed um, 20 garments that kind of had a, a, a common thread among all the, the pieces. And um, it, uh, it was shocking. I mean, people were really blown away because they had really not ever seen, I think that kind of level of attention brought to, I mean, yeah, there's always been like leather garments and leather jackets, but, um, I think that uh, I had kind of touched on being um, uh, I'm trying to find the right word, being uh, uh, luxury driven and, um, and really uh, trying to find a, um, uh, 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 a, a, a touch on a, a, uh, um, a high-end uh, uh, feel for the for the garments, because I mean, before that, you know, it was more kind of that Marlon Brando look or 
the Michael Jackson from Thriller, or kind of jacket, or you know something that was more costumey than it was fashion. And um, you know the response from the audience that night. I, and I remember thinking to myself, "Well, listen, uh, they're either gonna hate it <laughs> or they're gonna really like it." So. You know, I just kind of sent my people, my models out there with the designs and kind of threw my hands up and left it to God and said, you know, we'll see what happens. And, and people really liked it. And I was very happy because I had worked very hard on it. And uh, Well, you, you did a fabulous that. job. I think I remember that show. I Thank think you. I was there. Uh, I, you had some wonderful models and uh, great, a great selection. And speaking of models, how do you decide on a model? How do you cast a model? Because you've had some wonderful models in your show walk for you. And um, you know, you work with many great models, the real superstars. How do you pick a model? What is the criteria? Well, um, I, I gotta say probably as a designer, I feel like I was very fortunate um, in my early days, because, um, you know, I think that I sparked a lot of interest in the line. So I had like a real uh, cornucopia of, of different models coming to me to want to walk, um, you know, to, to get that look. It was very unique and very new back then. So I, I was very blessed that I had met a, a lot of good models in my early days who wanted to participate in what I was doing. Um, but after that, um, yeah, I got, I got, I started getting, you know, more, uh, more and more selective about who I wanted. And, and I really try to look for, I look for models who actually want to be models and who are um, really uh, committed to being a model, meaning they, you know, they keep the, you know, they, they keep their, their physical appearance up, their, uh, they keep up their, their, their styling, their, their, you know, they, they actually practice walking. They, um, you know, they really are paying attention to what it takes to be a skillful model. Because, you know, I'm sure you know this to be in the industry, there are a lot of people, who, you know, they may be pretty or whatever, and they just say they're a model, but they haven't really committed to the profession of modeling. And one thing I think I've learned over the years is that model, modeling is hard. It's not just your just prettiness walk up and down the runway. You actually do have to understand how to sell yourself, how to sell the merchandise, how to sell the idea behind the merchandise for the designer. And that's actually a skill set. And uh, I really appreciate the, the, the young women and men who are uh, striving to uh, to do that uh, on a very professional level. So, um, yeah, being professional, being stylish, being uh, committed to model, those, those are the kind of things I really look for in a model and uh, someone who can kind of really bring a character to the close um, is kind of what my criteria is. Okay. And I think you're uh, so right because uh, the purpose of a model, a model's job is to sell a product or bring attention to a brand. You know, that is the job of the model. It is not how far you can bend back. It is not how, you know, bad you can walk on the runway, all the twists and turns, roll around, kick off your shoes like Patty LaBelle. It's none of that. It is selling the garment. It is convincing that audience that they want to see that designer after the show and purchase something. Or they can see themselves in it because a lot of times, you know, models don't understand it's not just your walk. They say, I can walk, I can walk. Well, that's great. I think we all walk. You know, we may not have a model walk, but anybody can walk. It's selling the garment that is the real key to being a successful model. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with super designer Kenya Smith. We're going to run over and say hello to our sponsors. And we'll be right back in just a moment. Back in a moment.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we are talking with the amazing designer, Kenya Smith. Now, Kenya has an amazing line. It is absolutely fabulous and I love it. We want to talk to him about winning the $5,000 competition. I just want to make sure you heard me. $5,000 cash. No, we're not talking about a trip. We're not talking about this or that. We are talking cash. about giving you $5,000 in cash. Kenya, you won the Fashion and Beauty Olympics. $5,000 mm -hmm. cash. Talk a little bit about the experience. How did you prepare? What were your models? What was the walk on the runway? And when they called your number, what was the feeling? Well, it was um, it was a very good experience uh, uh, for me. Um, I I would definitely recommend it for any aspiring designer because it's a real uh, competition. It's it really is um, uh, a, uh, a competitive nature to it that I think brings out the best in the people who participate in it and. You know, it really gives you a, a sense of what you need to do to, to make it to the top. And, um, you know, those types of uh, uh, stresses on your character and, and work is, is really what you need to really help develop you. Um, not just as a designer, just as a person. Um, you know, it's uh, I always make the joke, you know, is anybody else other than your mama like what you're doing? <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, uh, competitions like these uh, really help uh, uh, solidify that for the designer that, you know, you really have something that you are uh, uh, bringing forth to the world that's uh, there's a, some artistic value. And, um, uh, it's uh, it's it was a, a fabulous experience. It was hard, and it was nerve wracking, and you know I was very happy that the other designers were of such high caliber, because um, you know it, it's one thing to win, but if you're literally just zero point, this the best one out of all the group. You know, you wanna you wanna be in a group of people who are really highly skilled and are really good designers, and um, and that's the kind of experience I had. I mean, I was nervous that you know I saw some of the other stuff there, and I was like, you know, <laughs> there's some real competitors here. You know, it's I'm it's, in, uh, it's not gonna be a walk. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna be a walk through the park, and I was actually very happy about that because. For me, it's, you know, bring it on. You know, I've always had that kind of attitude, you know, when I do a, a fashion show or, or, or anything, you know, I, I know I, I see the other designers on the runway, you know, getting the models lined up and I look and I say, nice stuff, nice stuff. But, you know, my, my uh, goal in the back of my mind is kill everyone. <laughs> and, oh, you God, know, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, I, I actually, when I, when I'm shaking hands with the models going down the line, thanking them for being there, that's what, that's the last thing I put in their mind. You know, I had said in the ear, kill everybody. <laughs> and, and they really, and, and then they nod and they get it, you know, they like, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. And, you know, and they, they do it and they really, you know, I think that kind of last kind of push really gets them to focus on what they need to do. Now, and, how did you pick the models though? I mean, because now you're, you gotta understand this is $5,000 in cash. No mistakes can be made because one mistake and you lose points. So models gotta be together. You know, the line has to be together. The walk has to be together. You can lose because of your models, not just your clothes. Yeah, uh, yeah, very, very true. And I, I had two very good models. Uh, uh, at the time, um, and they, you know, they had already shown that they, you know, can carry the look and carry the uh, uh, the the piece as well. Um, 
So I, I think, you know, if you're going to do the competition, you certainly have to, you know, do dress rehearsals and, and pick the right people who really kind of exemplify your look. Um, you know, they don't have to necessarily, in my case, they were my friends, but they don't have to be your friend. You know, you don't have to be best buddies for life. They just have to be able to uh, carry the product the way you want it. I mean, the, the one thing about the competition uh, um, yeah, that you may not always get in all competitions is that it'll be exactly the way you want it to be. It, the look of it will be exactly what you want. Uh, the models will, the looks will be exactly what you want. The makeup will be exactly what you want. Um, you know, so it, it really is about you and what you contribute to the to the uh, competition and the models and the clothing and everything else. It, it won't be about um, such and such didn't do this and that. No, it's all you from the music to the accessories, to the designs, to the models, everything. It, it's yeah, all you. Win and win. You have to say, this is what I want. Now, was there any mental preparation for you? as a designer, mentally, what was your thought? Because, you know, some people just think, oh, you know, I'm never gonna, you know, I'm never gonna do a competition. Why would I compete? But I think everybody should go through, if they're going to compete, I think it's something they have to do mentally to be ready. Was there any mental preparation? Well, yeah, like I, you know, like I said a moment ago, you know, I, I always have the attitude that I'm, I'm there to win. You know, I'm there to, to just kill everything around me. Um, and you have to have that kind of attitude for a lot of things in life. You know, you have to be committed to what you're doing and you're bringing everything you can to the forefront to, to win. doesn't mean you'll always win, mm -hmm. um, but you put in the max amount of your effort in. Losing, losing and not doing what you need to do is one thing. But, you know, if you did everything possibly you could possibly do and you win or lose, it's a good feeling because, you know, you brought the best of your game to the table. And, you know, you definitely have to, to be of that kind of mental attitude um, that, um, you know, you, you're not going to be second best to anybody. As if, if, if someone thinks they're better than you, they're going to have to prove it. All right, now, I love that attitude. Right. I love that attitude, Kenya. Now, right. you won. Did you realize when they called the number? Because the good thing I like about the competition, they never, there was no talking in the competition, no description of the garments, no. And the reason why it's that way is because we don't want someone, if the commentator is saying really good things about this person, for the, the judges to lean that way even though I don't think we had judges that would have done that, but to keep it crystal clear, we only say the number of the designer's garment, like the number of that designer. We don't say the name and the designer yeah. is not seen till the end when they are called out. That is the only time I believe that the designers were seen. No one knew, like, I mean, if they knew your clothes, they knew it was you. But that's the only way, unless, you know, it's the only way. There's no other way they would have known. And I think that that was pretty fair because yeah. nobody can lean either way. It's a number. You don't get the numbers till you get to the show. You put your hand in a bag and you pick the number. So no one can say, listen, I'm number so-and-so. It's no way to do that either. And your garments are inspected backstage, inside and out. Also, so let's yes. talk a little bit about the garments being inspected backstage from the inside out, opposed to just the visual of what it looks like on stage. Yeah, uh, yeah, my clothes were inspected, and uh, so were the other ones. And there were, you know, there were some people that really had not uh, completed. Uh, the garments for for whatever reason, you know, a thing to happen, life is what it is. But, you know, um, with any competition, um, any competition, not this uh, fashion avenues, but 
any competition, you you have to follow the rules of the competition. You have to understand what the rules are, how they affect you in competing, and you know you have to fulfill them. And the the instructions in the in the and uh, the competition were very clear that the garment had to be shelf ready, meaning it had to you know look like it was on a shelf in a store. So if your garment's on a shelf of a store, you're not going to have pins holding up the hems or, you know, uh, tack glue holding in your lining or, you know, with, you know, whatever it may be. That's not shelf ready. So it had to be as if you put could put a sales tag on it right from the runway and hang it in a store. And once I had that instruction, that's what I made sure I revived you know, no excuses. That was clearly written in the rules. You know, get it done. That's it. Excellent. Now, when they called your number and you realized you won the money, you're like, I have five thousand dollars. <laughs> what? The, what was that feeling like? Well, you know, I mean, it always feels good to win. Don't, 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 don't get it wrong. You know, I'm not gonna, you know get some uh, uh, some uh, 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 statement about you know oh you know it's not about this the winning is it yeah it is about the winning winning is good working hard and winning is great it is a great feeling there's nothing wrong with it at all it doesn't make you a bad person it doesn't mean that you were stuck up or that you think you're better than everybody. It just means that in this competition, you worked your ass off. The judges looked at what you did. They liked it and they liked it better than the other person's and they chose you. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's life. And, you know, everyone needs to get over it. Just, you know, I have a, a 13 year old son and, you know, a lot of these things in these schools they do now, I don't think that realistic where everybody gets an award for, for showing up and everyone gets a medal. You know, that's in life and for real life, you know, you have to work very, very hard. And if you work harder than the other person and you commit it more than the other person, I guarantee you're going to pull ahead. Um, that's, and that's just how life is. Excellent. And I think you're absolutely right because I think uh, one of the things I like about the competition and you winning is you, you showed up for every meeting that they called. Um, you had everything in place. You did everything on time. You know, all of those things count. Once people sign up, from the moment you sign up, everything you do counts. And, and you know, you were on time. All of those things are very important. So, you know, you did an amazing job, Kenya, <laughs> with the fashion and beauty of Olympics. You were fab, you love. Thank you. Ladies Thank you. and gentlemen, we're talking with designer Kenya Smith. We're going to run over and say hello to our sponsors, and we'll be right back in just a moment. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back on Fashion Avenue News, and we are talking to the couture designer, Kenya Smith. Now, Kenya, you have some amazing design, um, amazing models walk for you. You've had, like, supermodels. I think Mimi and, uh, you know, talk a little bit about that. Well, um, I have had uh, some amazing uh, models walk for me, uh, Mimi Town being one of them. And uh, to this day, I'm, I'm so grateful to her uh, for taking the time uh, to walk for me, one of my uh, uh, larger shows in Nosha. I mean, um, it, she really just set the pace and, and changed the whole dynamic of the show, not just for my line, but for, for everything else. I mean, she just electrified the stage. And, you know, uh, I, I think that I was uh, so fortunate. And, and it's so funny because, um, uh, when my line came up uh, for that show that Mimi was in, everyone everyone told me that I changed the whole dynamic of the show. That it was the show seemed to be moving slowly, and you know the the, the, the clothes weren't as dynamic. But when Mimi stepped out in that red dress and she yeah. did that killer walk that she has, I mean, she just a, has a killer walk. And then she, you know, she had one of my helmets as part of one of the accessories and she, she threw it at one of the audience members <laughs> and walked off. I mean, she just, she just has this great um, uh, presence. Um, I mean, she's just so professional and, and slick and um, she, she just, you know, she, she's just polished and it's, it's, it's just a great look. Um, that she has, no matter what she's doing, she's always bringing this edge that is, um, it's, it's thrilling to watch. She's just a very exciting model to watch on the runway. So it was, it was, uh, it was great. She was, she was a wonderful, wonderful model. But, uh, uh, I mean, it was, it was great. Now I've had other, and I've had other ones, you know, who have done excellent job as well. You know, Love Tucker, um, uh, uh, did a show for me, uh, uh, also for Nosha, and she and she really just blew it away. Um, you know, I've had uh, 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 Stuella Deville; she's done some some openings for me. It's just you know, she did some some really good work. So I've I've had a lot of great models, and uh, they've all uh, have performed uh, uh, very well. And I hope that they uh, uh, think that. Uh, that did well as well. <laughs> well, you have amazing models. Did you also have Tyson Beckford? Oh yes, I. I uh, that was um, that was a a, a, a thrill because I, I I liked Tyson as a model long before I even really got into fashion. Um, you know, I was very proud of him as an African American male that he was able to kind of established a look for black males and and something that's as uh, stylish and as uh, American iconism as polo. And um, he was at a show that I was doing in the Cayman Islands many years ago. Um, and uh, he saw myself and he, he really wanted to walk in. And he asked, could he be in my segment? And I was like, uh, yeah, you don't have to ask that. You're in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, so he did it. And um, uh, it actually sold that piece right off the runway. As soon as he stepped off, wow. someone offered me money for it. Um, but um, yeah, it was it was great. Um, he, he's And he's a great guy. I mean, he considering who he is and, and, and the impact he's had on on the industry, Bash, he is a very sweet and um, uh, humble uh, man and uh, very generous nature about him. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's a warm person, good, good guy, really good guy. I was very, very happy to meet him. And, and he's a real model, why? Because as soon as he got off the runway, someone offered you money for that jacket. That <laughs> was, is a model's job. Wonderful. So yeah. 
the garment. It's not about right. you. It's about right. someone next to you. He did his job. He right. did his job. So that's right. amazing. Now, you work with some great models, but you also shot with some great models, great TV, Germany's Next Top Model. Uh, you know, we can't run the video. We do have video and photos. We can't put those up because, you know, uh, they still are running the show, so they won't allow us, but we can talk about it. Yeah, and, that was uh, a great experience. Yeah. I, I wanted to just give a little overview uh, to the audience so that they will understand the power of Kenya Smith. Let me just explain <laughs> it. Uh, Germany's Next Top Model contacted Fashion Avenue News. They wanted a magazine on the level of Vogue, but they want an independent magazine. They had followed Fashion Avenue News. They sort of republished all the time, one time, and they even ordered copies, which I had no knowledge of. Someone orders a copy, they get a copy. We didn't know it was Germany's Next Top Model. They sent us an email, and then, you know, I thought it was a joke. I was like, oh, someone's pranking me. You know, uh, I'm not going to you know, respond. And I didn't really respond for a little while. And I kept getting the email. And I spoke to um, Allison Brown, who I was working with at that time. And I said, do you think this is a prank or someone trying just to get out information? And he said, well, if you answer, at least you can find out. And if it's a prank, it's a prank. And if it's not, then, hey, we might be on to something. So I said, okay, well, let me answer. To make a long story short, I answered. And uh, they, it was legit. Uh, they wanted to actually just use the magazine for uh, the, you know, the model, and you know, just come to America and use the magazine. You know, be printed in the magazine as an editorial. But I said to Allison, I said, you know, if we're gonna give them all these pages, you know, do the shoot and stuff like that. Why can't we have one of our own designers that are working hard here in America, you know, dress the model? He said, well, ask them. Well, I told them, I didn't ask. I said, you know, I'd be happy to do this, but I'll only do it if we can use one of our own designers. They asked us to submit the designers and they would let us know. They said, that's fair. Well, we submitted designers and out of all of the designers we submitted, they chose your work. So I say that to say your work stands on its own. You know what I'm trying to say? It's not fluff when someone tells you about Kenya Smith. This is real stuff. He got chosen over lots of other designers that we submitted. When they looked at those clothes, they said, we want him. We want this guy. And I was ecstatic because... I think either that year or the year before, I think in October you had won the $5,000. And then in March was the Germany's Next Top Model, which was not even six months from the time we won. And that made me feel really good because I know that this designer here is onto something. So they chose you and we, we did the mood boards. We did everything. They wanted you. They came to New York with 20 uh, models, filming the segment with professional filming, audio and everything. And Kenya, I'm gonna let you talk about the rest from the time of the auditions at, you know, Chelsea, we did at Chelsea at that time, all right. the way to, uh, you know, to actually telling the girl that she got it, the model that she got the cover. Yeah, well, the you know, experience was, was, was a lot of fun. Um, and it was, it was, um, you know, it's just like, uh, like uh, you see on uh, on on uh, uh, E Channel, whatever uh, uh, those different reality shows. Um, and um, uh, the girls were uh, the models they had brought with them were very excited, and and they had not really ever. I don't think any of them had ever been published before. Um, no, um, the at, at that at that at that cal uh, that's caliber of their career and um and i i think that they were uh <laughs> thrown off by my work uh, they're probably expecting you know these flowing ball gowns or you know some of these 
other things that, you know you see in fashion and um you know i worked really hard on that shoot because um i know they liked the idea of the kind of urban motorcycle theme and i had gone to friends of mine to uh uh rent motorcycles from them so i could have them in the in the photo shoot and it was it was quite an operation getting them there and getting them on the uh the stage with the models and uh, uh, being able to get the lighting right and the angles right, and, you know, girls were draped over the motorcycles and all that other stuff. It, it was, um, you know, it was a, uh, it was, it was a real, you know, uh, intense modeling session. I think the girls were uh, uh, feeling like they were really uh, part of something special, and. Um, uh, all the way to choosing the final two models to be in the actual shoot, um, you know, and and it was it was heartbreaking in some cases because that that one girl, as you remember, she had not gotten chosen for yeah. anything. She fell on the floor, started crying hysterical, and was begging me in the bathroom. It yeah, was I could do. I put it on you. I said he's the designer. I can't really do anything. It's him. <laughs> she, well, really let's see. Like, she was like, "Please, they're gonna send me home." I was like. I, I can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we had given her. I, I think we had given her another chance, and you know, we gave her several more chances to collect herself and and really. I mean, you know, sometimes you gotta. You know, everyone has a bad day or whatever, and you know, you know, I, it was, <laughs> I felt so bad for the girl because she really uh, <laughs> she was, was really trying, and but uh, I think she was just a little overwhelmed, a little emotional over her own personal experience being in the group. So, um, um, but I think that the the model that we picked to be in a shoot did a very, very good job, uh, particularly the one for the, for the cover of Fashion Avenue News. She, she was very beautiful and very intense, I remember. And uh, she gave a really good show. And um, uh, I think, I think that uh, all everyone on the on the team that day, from the, the the models to the photographer to me, that we really brought together a uh, a really beautiful product, um, which is always my goal to you know uh, really establish kind of a a uh, uh, a beautiful kind of scene, and uh, you know I think we blew it out of the park really. It was fabulous. It was it fabulous. was fabulous. They had the fans going for the hair. They interviewed mm -hmm. you outside. Everybody's looking, wondering who is this guy. And then you had real motorcycles. I was shocked. I was like, real motorcycles. You was like, I'm bringing motorcycles. And I'm thinking, yeah. okay, maybe it's a picture. I don't know. But I right. said, real motorcycles. I'm like, no, he's bringing like real motorcycles. I thought that <laughs> that was amazing. Because what that says is that your person is going to go out of your way to make it right for your brand. And that is very important right. as far as the designer is concerned. You have to go out of your way to bring it. Yeah, and tell your story. Yeah. They absolutely loved you. They yeah. loved you. So they said that this was the first shoot that they did, that they didn't have to change anything. And to me, that said a lot about you bringing it. They didn't have to change anything. They didn't have to edit anything. Allison Brown did an excellent job. And this was the first time they said that that ever happened. So again, congratulations, Kenya, Thank because you. Uh, you did a great job with Germany's Next Stop Model. And Thank you, Thank you also do a great job when you do the fashion shows. Now you did the live mannequin showroom. Let's talk about that as we get close to the end of this. Let's talk a little <laughs> bit about the live mannequin showroom because that was amazing. Well, are we still on the first one on, on, on 43rd? <laughs> yes, the first one, that's the main one. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was a very interesting day. And, and I gotta say, Sophia, you, you contributed, I think, the most out of anybody in that that day because you were out on the street, on the sidewalk. If you can, if you all can imagine Sophia Davis with a uh, a horn <laughs> on 
Fifth Avenue and 43rd Street, telling people to come look at the fashions in this window. Uh, uh, Sophia had gotten. Either, right? I was there. Come on over. Come on over. Sophia Davis it. had gotten exactly. us these series of. Uh, Sophia Davis had gotten us these series of, of uh, storefront windows. I mean, like the display type that you see at like Saks or, or Bird Off, whatever. And um, we had the designers all dress individual models and put them in the windows as a live mannequins wearing the. And let me tell you something, it was the coolest thing you've ever seen in your life. And we had crowds, crowds of people mobbing the sidewalk to look at these models. And, um, um, you know, Sophia was out there dragging people, you know, say, come, come take a look at this, come take a look at this. And everyone kind of flooded, or what? What is she talking about? And then they were like, whoa, that's cool. <laughs> you know, they had really had uh, not um, expected. You know, it was, it was what I call a great New York story. You know, like something like that only happens, that kind of magic only happens in New York City. You see those kind of unusual and different things for the day and you know i know a lot of people are like yeah i was just walking down the street and then i saw this big fashion thing going on and you know that's a great new york story it doesn't happen it doesn't happen in chicago it doesn't happen in st louis you know it doesn't happen in LA. it happens in new york and, only in uh, new york city honey only in right. new york <laughs> only in new york it was it was a great experience <laughs> excellent and we were glad to have you because your stuff, of course, stood out. Your garments stood out. You had your helmets going on. You had the right model. And, and you know, to me, uh, with your collection, that's one of the things that always makes you stand out. You always have the right models for whatever you're doing. And you take the time to get the right model for it. So I think that's fabulous. Now, yeah. Kenya, our last thing, what can you say to people that inspired to be a designer or, uh, you know, have any kind of, um, you know, aspiration? What inspiration can you say to them? Well, I, the one thing I want to say um, is go for it. Do it. If you really have something that you think you want to share with the world as a designer, I'm an architect and I'm a fashion designer and I have you know, trained and uh, worked in the design industry for, you know, 25 years. So um, your vision deserves a voice in the world. And that's your job to bring that voice forward. Um, and if you think someone's going to come and find you, they're not. You have to go out and show what you have. And, um, you know, do it. Take your stuff, get it made or make it yourself or whatever it is and put it on a runway and let people see it. And, you know, you gotta, and you gotta toughen up. You can't be afraid. You know, you can't uh, be uh, shy, you know, and, and you gotta take the kind of mental attitude that I have. Either they're gonna love it or they're gonna say it stinks. And if they say it stinks, then that's a lesson to you to what you need to change. Use it as a, as a teaching tool and, and come back harder. But yeah. don't be afraid to go and get your head kicked in. You know, cause everybody who's successful has had their kick, head kicked in, everybody. No one's ever just, you know, all of a sudden just, just boom, they're, they're perfect. You know, you gotta go in there, get your knots in your head, learn and then come back and be victorious so if you are a designer you know doing those little sketches and stuff like that that's great but um go get your stuff made go find a fashion show or put one on yourself and get your stuff out there and it will take time and you know it's not going to be an overnight success you won't be an oprah the next day but if your stuff is really good and you're really committed you'll get there. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's about time and, and, you know, and, uh, uh, network and you have to build a network. No one ever gets there by themselves. Exactly. You, know, you have to learn, you have to learn how to talk 
about yourself and how uh, your why your line is important. You got to learn how to uh, to be respectful to other people and what they're doing and help them uh, uh, succeed as well. And, you know, whenever you get into these collaborations, you know, uh, with photographers or magazines or whatever, you have to bring your A game. Make it make your contribution worth their time. And, you know, and they and they will always love you. And they'll always come back, you know, and they'll open up opportunities for you. Like Sophia had opened up that uh, Jeremy says uh, top model for me. Uh, but, you know, I think because she saw how committed I was to doing a good job. And that's what people want to see. Even if you're not at a job, you're working for yourself. People want to see that you're committed to it. So, you know, work hard, get yourself out there, be committed, be patient. It'll take some time, but mm -hmm. just stay with it. You know, there's no reason, you know, there's nothing else in life <laughs> better than working hard. And I said it before, working hard and succeeding. And you, and you will benefit in so many different ways uh, if, you, if you get there and do it for yourself. Excellent. That's my that's my advice. <laughs> yeah, that is excellent because you know, especially the part about networking, especially the part about speaking up, especially the part about you know being committed. I'm committed to my brand. I wear bling sunglasses. I don't care if people don't like them. I know people laugh. I don't care. I still wear them because I'm comfortable in my own skin. If you don't believe in your brand yourself. How can you expect other people to believe in it? So what you have to do is you have to go for it. You have to say, this is what I want. You have to say, even if someone else does not okay it, meaning they don't like it. And I'm sure when people see me, they're like, what is going on? But do I care? No, because this is my brand. So I agree with you, Kenya, 110% on that. And I want to take a moment just to thank you for your time because no, we know you all this line is a busy. And I appreciate you so much for taking time to, um, you know, just spend this little time with me. I really appreciate it, Kenya. No, thank you, thank you, Sophia, for everything. You've been a great partner in this in this uh, this dream of mine. So thank you, and thank That's you for having me on your show. <laughs> Thank you. And tell your mom I said hello. That's my good friend. I will. Good friend. <laughs> yes. I will. I we will. were like, we were like, uh, you know, Barney <laughs> and Clyde out here when we were uh, going coming to your show. We had a great day that day. We had some good fun. So, you know, she, she's a doll. She's a doll. I love her. And I told her next time she comes to New York, I'm taking her out to dinner. So or lunch or whatever she wants, you know. So All thank right. you, Kenya. I'll close thank you. it out. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Fashion Avenue News, where only the best will do. Our guest this evening has been the amazing designer, Couturier, $5,000 winner, Germany's next top model designer, Kenya Smith. Planet Zero Motorsport. And we'll see you next week.